um, and would love to you know experience that again today. So, um, or you know get in the poll tonight. So um, we'll see. But uh, I'm just gonna try and do my part and not miss any shifts and, and all that and hold a steady wheel and, and hopefully that's enough to get us full. Fontana is gonna be a short track after the next this next race. Uh, your thoughts on the conversion or was it you lo- one of those guys lobbying to keep it the way where it's at? Well, I mean. I love that racetrack as is. I feel like it produces amazing racing. Um, but at the same time, like I, I think our we need more short tracks. Like it's, I, I feel like sitting in the stand in the stands is hard to hard to view a two mile track or even even a mile and a half. So, you know they're so big. So um, I think short tracks produce you know exciting racing, exciting finishes, um, tempers, you know stuff like that. So. Um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, a proponent of making it a, a short track, and and I think we need we need more of them. How was the off season? Did you finally get some time to relax? I know you got the house in Scottsdale. Did you get some family time and just you know, probably the less crazy off season you've had in a long time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's really like my only off-season I've ever had, so um, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, you know, we've been out in Arizona and um, just lots of stuff to do out there, so um, you know, the most consecutive days I've probably ever been with my family, so that was, that was a lot of fun, and uh, getting Owen involved in other sports, Audrey even as well, um, and then just really just hanging out not doing anything not not worrying about like what race I'm traveling to next so uh, it was fun but but you know since we had the baby um, I've been racing quite a bit again so it's been good to get back behind the wheel and uh, get racing before our, our cup season starts. You and Cliff seem to hit on something towards the end of last season does that help you starting the new season and you know just trying to get momentum early out of the gate? Yeah I, I felt like we were pretty fast in you know, the last 10 races I think we were one of the best teams in the playoffs consistently um, and I think we were I think we were kind of that way the whole year we just didn't execute um, to our potential where I, I think we executed to our potential more often in the playoffs so um, maybe not every race but uh, I felt like we did a decent job so yeah we ended the year pretty strong and and I don't think any rules have really changed over the course of the off season. So um, I think whoever was fast towards the end of the year probably going to be pretty good to start the year. I think so. Um, we'll see. But uh, ready just to hit the track and, and kind of see where we stack up. Kyle, you know, you talked about living out in Phoenix. Di- different West Coast swings. It's going to be kind of nice to be like headquartered out there to run run those three races. Um, Honestly, it probably won't be much different because that's typically what I did, anyways. Um, yeah, we would, we would. I don't think any year I ever. Every year, we've just stayed out west. So um, whether it be you know, renting a Airbnb or or whatever it may be, um, you know, those are long flights, which I'm sure a lot of you guys do fly back and forth. But I don't want to, so uh, I've always just stayed out there and, and enjoy the weather and, and golf and hang out and, and all that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess it'll be a little bit different that we're going you know, back to, to Phoenix every week, which I guess you know, after Fontana, we're going to go uh, on a ski trip for the week. But um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not going to feel way different. In the in the 500 last year, uh, 24 out of the 40 starters in some kind of a wreck, only 15 cars on the lead lap at the end. What did it feel like to be in a race that that had all that happening and all that carnage? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember the. I don't. I, I guess I would probably would have been one of those cars that got caught up in a wreck, but I don't know which one. So um, I I couldn't answer it because I don't remember. What, what does it feel like to be in a pack and you kind of get a sense that something may be about to happen? Mm, I don't know. I mean, a lot of the times when these crashes happen, you don't really expect it. Uh, you know, in the middle of the races, you know, I think at the end, like the closer it gets to the end, the more you expect the wreck. So that's when it gets like nerve wracking. But um, <clears throat> until, I mean, like I said, either at the end of the stages or the end of the race, that's when you expect it. I think a lot of the times when um, the crashes happen, not not at the ends of the stages of the races like you're not expecting it so it kind of just happens and you're trying to avoid it but um i don't know I, I in a way too you're always kind of expecting it but at the ends you're always 
more aware of it. Hamlin said he's going to run a house out by you in Scottsdale for the West Coast Swing as well. He said the one thing that he had to have was a pickleball court. Is that something that you're into or something that you've picked up as well? I haven't yet. I would love to. I always, usually, you know, until I got this house, we would, I would always stay with Denny and um, we would always have a tennis court. And um, I mean, every night we would we would play tennis and you know, gamble on it. And I'm not good at it. Denny's as he is with everything you know he he tries harder than everybody so you know he'll go get tennis lessons i'm sure and um all that but uh so he would be pretty good but anyways it'd be a lot of fun um so yeah pickleball seems to have been exploding here lately so um i don't know where his house is but i hope it's really close to mine so um i'll be over there most nights playing with those guys i was going with his contract extension was announced earlier so just having him as a team Yeah, I think just honestly having all four of us um, solid at, at Hendrick Motorsports for the next however many years is is a good thing. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have you, know, Alex, uh, with the team. I guess for at least three years. So um, I really enjoy Alex. You know, I feel like we're great friends. Um, we have a lot in common. You know, with the dirt racing stuff. So uh, he's who I'm probably closest with just because of that connection through dirt racing. So um, glad to have him back and and. Uh, you know, we work out together in the mornings. You know, when I'm in town, so he's who I spend the most time with out of you know the, the rest of my teammates. And um, yeah, happy, happy that he, that we're both you know at Hendrick Motorsports for for the next you know however many years. Do you have a favorite memory of the 500 as a fan of road driving? Um, Something that's stuck in your head for years. No, I mean I don't know. Uh, obviously, I mean not a great memory, but you know. I guess when Dale Earnhardt Sr. passed away, I mean, that's that probably sticks in everybody's mind. Um, also, when he won, finally, and, and every crew member came out on pit road, I think that's probably the best memory of this of this place, probably for the majority of people who, who haven't experienced something amazing themselves. Um, so, yeah, it's just a, it's a special place with a, with a great atmosphere and, and a lot on the line, too. So, um, would love to uh, be a part of those special moments like so many greats have before. So you're coming down to the last lap. You're close to the front. Who do you not want behind you? I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Have you talked to AJ Allmendinger or Connor Daly about any 500 tips? Uh, I haven't talked to anybody really yet about 500 tips. Um, my mind's kind of been on on the NASCAR stuff still at this point. Um, I think is like the IndyCar season gets going and and. I, you know, hopefully we'll get to go to some practice days uh, for the 500. You know, I think that's when I'll kind of start my initial um, studying, um, I guess. But uh, I did get to meet, you know, Felix Rosenquist. He was at the simulator a few weeks ago. So we chatted some about about it, and um, it was good to, to hear him because, you know, he'll be one of my teammates. So, um, but, yeah, you know, I think, I think once I get to the Speedway, and especially, too, when I get closer to when I get in the car, uh, I'll be asking whoever's got any advice. Were you a big Tony Kanaan fan when you were younger? Um, I think I don't. I don't remember who I was a fan of really in the IndyCar side of things. But when I was with Chip, you know, he got. I got to, or he was you know, one of our teammates um, for the Rolex. So um, always enjoyed working with him. He was hilarious. I, I loved our team. I feel like I wish. I wish I could go back and. Well, I would if I was to run the Rolex 24 ever again. I would want the same exact team that we had. And, you know, Scott, Tony, and Jamie. Um, that was just a, a really, really fun few years that we had. So, um, but yeah, getting to getting to know Tony a little bit more and uh, on all that. And, and I'm similar size to him. <laughs> maybe not without the maybe not my upper body, but uh, you know, we would we would use the same seat in certain stuff. So. Um, yeah, no, it was fun, fun times racing. Well, he announced today that uh, this year's Indy 500 will be his last IndyCar race, and he's a pretty big name, and he's a very popular driver up there. So to see his career in those cars come to an end, what do you, what's your reaction? Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's been a lot to the sport, uh, motorsports in general, but especially, you know, the IndyCar side of things. And, 
Um, he's had a great career, so yeah. um, I know he's got a, a family as well, so it's going to be great for him to you know, spend even more time with them. Um, I don't know what other racing that he'll do. I don't know if he's completely – I don't know much about it, so I don't know if he's completely retiring or if he'll still do some – not retiring. Okay, but that'll be okay. Plastic. All right, then. Yeah. Um, but e- either way, you know, I, I hope – I hope he's got a great run. I don't, um, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think uh, he's he's been a, a great a great ambassador. So um, nice to see him in his Indy 500 career uh, this year, and hopefully get a win. Have you Thank been you. on an IndyCar simulator yet, or anything like that? No, I haven't. As far as the NASCAR season this year is concerned, obviously it's going to be your third with Hendrick. Um, 21 was such a phenomenal year. Uh, 22, still a multi-win season. So what's going to constitute a successful season for you in this five-team this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, obviously I know that, like, winning 10 races is very, very hard. Um, so I don't I don't like to set my goals that high. But, uh, you know, I think, I think, honestly, if you can win multiple cup races each year and, and be in contention, um, in other races as well I think that's a solid season so yes you know we didn't win as much as we wanted to last year but three wins is still a lot more than than others had so I don't view it as a totally you know, down year I feel like as as some people may compared to our year before so um, but you know at least we know that we can go out there and we've done it before and won 10 races and also race and a championship so we know that we're capable of it so that's that's nice to have that out in the distance that you can you can do it but um, it's difficult, so so we'll see. But uh, I just want to be in contention, making making less mistakes this year, and and you're just giving ourselves more opportunity to win. Yeah, I know you um, nearly won this race a few years ago with your broken wheel issue. Um, and I know you've also talked about this type of race that maybe isn't the, your strongest suit. How do you feel that you are getting into golf with with this type of racing? Um, I don't know if it's comfort or better the chess game or. I don't know. I, I answered it earlier. I can't remember where. No, no. I don't know if it was here or um, over there. But it's like sometimes I'll you know I'll have like I've had a couple good races. <laughs> so like I'll have a good race. But like all right, I think I figured it out. And then you know you show up the next time and it's like you're you can't find your way back to the front and you get caught up in a crash. So it's uh it's hard. You know it just I feel like the style of racing changes each year too. So. Yes, you can study, and, and yes, you know it's it's great to study. But you get out there, you feel prepared, and then you get out there, and it's a total different style of racing and drafting. So um, it's difficult. You know, those there's there's a handful of guys that must be really good at learning on the fly and and you know adapting to this style quickly. And um, I just haven't quite you know, figured it out, I guess. So um, you know, try to. Uh, do a better job again this year and, and see if you know we can stay ahead of the mess and um, you'll be there at the end of the race. A lot of people talk about with the duels for some guys like a, a Travis Pastrana, Connor Daly, those guys, it's like, man, they don't have any practice time and then they got to go straight in the race. Obviously, you're a veteran, you've done this before, but as you say, you're kind of learning. I'm curious, how do you look at the duel that you'll run on Thursday night and what you're hoping to get out of it other than getting out of it with a clean car? Yeah, I don't know. Um, from what I remember, the duels last year with the... This is Harrison Burton, driver of the number 21. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, check out one of these two videos beside me. Visit funstretch.com for more racing content.